What's up, people? It's your boy Jatua. I'm here today in Kerbal Space Program, and uh, today we're doing Servo Mechs, something I touched briefly on when we were discussing it in the stream on Saturday, and I had a bit of difficulty getting it working, but I realized some of my faults then and have improved upon the design. So now we have this completely autonomous walking mech that can basically work as a pack mule. It's carrying several of our instruments in here. So we would be able to actually look in here and grab some of these. Uh, and it is walking at a fairly decent pace. As you can see here, um, it's currently outpacing our Kerbal. If we walk, we would have to run to keep up with it. But we can walk just slightly faster than it, which makes it very handy when you're building your bases. So, how does something like this get built? It's actually pretty easy to do a servo mech. And let's go ahead and get on, let's go ahead and board the craft here. There we go. <laughs> Just gonna hop on board so we don't have to walk anymore. And uh, let me show you how this is built. So a servo mech is actually a lot easier than a hinge mech or even a rotor mech because the animation series, the animation sequence that you use in the editor is pretty simple. It's just up, it's high to low or low to high as you use a counter. And you see this inside one is just rotating high to low while this one on the outside is going low to high. And they're both doing a 360 complete movement that you see here is permitted, allow full rotation. And so basically it's just rotating, counter rotating to keep the leg in the same spot, which allows you to walk forward. I've done this plenty of times in Inferno Robotics and I'm getting the hang of it in stock robotics now. There's just a few things you have to do to make this work. So let's dive into a really quick build and get one walking for you. It's actually easier to do it with two legs versus four because four is a lot of parts. So let's go ahead and do something really small and versatile. We're gonna start with this uh, small SAS, this inline reaction wheel. And from here, we're just gonna put our Kerbal sitting on the top. We're gonna take these and that's gonna be kind of like the shoulder area and this is going to be the leg area. And this is so we can actually extend parts of it out uh, with different pieces. And that should allow us to make a nice walking mech that works pretty well. Uh, we're gonna keep our craft very light, as light as possible, so that way we don't have to use a lot of RTGs or torque to make this happen. And we're gonna stick with some of the smallest servos you can do it really well with these the F12 and the, and the M06 servos, but we're actually going to go ahead and use just this M06 servo in this demonstration. So we're also going to grab some more of these inline reaction wheels because these enable you to slow your Kerbal well your mech down while it's in its falling animation to allow the other foot to catch up. So let's go ahead and rotate that and we'll rotate this one so they're facing upwards. So I'm going to keep this so it's walking on the inside of my arms in case I do decide to add arms to it later on. You don't have to but it is quite handy. Okay so from here it's pretty easy go ahead and add on a battery or two because you are going to need some batteries to keep this thing going and that should work just fine and you are going to need some rtgs i'm just moving this so it looks a little better uh, some rtgs which is really handy uh, for powering these units and we're going to keep this fairly low uh, that's actually going to probably be in the way of our animation we will see uh, I can just slide that up some 
and slide it in. You want your weight to be mostly down low and these rotors don't have much weight so oftentimes I will just come down here and slide some of these RTGs in here to ensure that I have enough weight down low going on. And you can remove this one if you're going to do that or you can use this as the actual leg itself. Different ways, different, uh, different ways you can make this happen. So let's go ahead and grab our servo. And we're just gonna make it so the blue is facing inwards and we only want to have one. We don't wanna have this set as a mirror. I'm actually gonna take a battery and put this here because that's gonna look a lot cleaner instead of having that big inset area. So let's take this, snap that on. Remember, only one. Now take another one, duplicate that part, flip it around, and face it in. So you should have kind of like an Oreo here. Your blue, blue, gray, gray. And this is basically what you want. You know, we're not gonna have anything else set up in here. We're gonna take this part, we're gonna set it up, and we're gonna we're then gonna put it in all of its places that we want it to go for right now. So what we're gonna do here is grab this first one and we're gonna set the traverse rate all the way up, dampening all the way down. Same with this one, once again, for the outer one. And if you've already done it for the first one and then mirrored it, uh, then, then kudos to you, I tend to forget. So we have tar traverse rate all the way up, dampening all the way down for both of our parts. Now you can take this RTG, snap it on the end here, and now you can, if you have these grip pads, fantastic, because these grip pads are awesome for making this work. And you can set this to uh, the extreme grip and then take this and rotate it downwards. Okay, so this is basically where we wanna stop <laughs> and now mirror this part to the other side. So let's go ahead, duplicate that, snap it on this other side, and voila. Okay, so what we want to do from here is grab our cowl. We don't want to set anything up just yet. We want our cowl to be in here and our parts to be in the cowl before we go any further forward with a very good reason is that it would be a, ma a massive pain in the butt if we don't do this. I will show you why. Let's go to our action groups. Let's go to our cal, and from here, I'm gonna to go to game only so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So we're gonna open the track editor. And then in here, we're gonna to go to our innermost servo, and then the outside servo on the same one. And we're gonna to go to target angle, target angle. Same thing on the other side, target angle and target angle. And now we're actually gonna go and select all four because this part doesn't matter. And we're just gonna get the torque limit percent of each one. So far, so good. Okay, so let's go ahead and expand out this. And this is where it becomes a lot easier than a hinge walking mech and a lot easier foot-wise than the rotor mech is you go here and you go high to low low to high and give it a test and you'll see wait nothing's happening the way I thought it would happen correct because there's one last thing we need to do to make this work but we want to have these all in here first and actually move it up and down because that's going to reset them all to what this value currently is instead of at zero where it currently comes so let's go ahead and go to our offset tool and then grab the outside servo. And this one you can either move forward or back. I usually like to snap them, but uh, sometimes it uh, I forget. <laughs> so you just get it as close as you can to the edge here. And then this other one, you do just the opposite and set it to the back edge. The snap gives you a more accurate walking animation, but you can do it either way and now we can actually come in here and try our animation again 
and you'll see it's actually walking forward. So with that being said, we need to go and do just the opposite for this side because now if, up to, if we're top to bottom on there, we want to be bottom to top here and then top to bottom on the outer one so that it's countering. And you'll see it will snap itself into position at zero. And let's take our length. We can drop this from five to two with this servo mech and it should be just fine. Any lower, it messes up the animation in my tests. And you see right here, it will walk forward. Now, if you want it to continue to happening, then go here and set your loop mode to repeat. And you'll see here, it will just keep walking forward. We're almost done, almost done. We wanna come here to our first torque Set that to 10 because otherwise it's going to be at a hundred percent we do not need a hundred percent it burns battery power and then come here paste it to all of your torques and that's just about it that's now set so now you can come here just make sure everything's fine with your traverse rate and your dampening everything looks good here and make sure you put all your servos on before adding them to your cal. Otherwise, you can get some duplication issues. Uh, there's a lot of different problems that will come up. Um, different servos will be thrown out uh, from your cal. Uh, definitely set all that up before you go through and do any of this. All right. So with that, up, with that set and ready to go, let's name our little guy Goji to and here we are we should be ready to walk okay so the first thing you'll notice is sometimes it'll come in and just completely lay flat over this does happen at times because at times what will happen is the servo will be loaded with zero torque this seems to happen at times more than than not it will just load with all the torque set to zero even though we have it set here so all you have to do to fix this is go to your play position and then you can you should have enough torque to kind of get your guy back up and walking right um, if you built it like I did with these five mini ones here and now you just hit your play and it should start walking forward And mind you, these are, this is just two RTGs and it's enough to power the entire thing going forward with this little mini walking animation. I prefer four legs because four legs tends to get you further faster and it's actually more stable than the two leg variation. It's just really easy to get the four leg, the two legs in versus the four legs. The four legs is just four more things to add into your cal it's really easy nothing complex if you want to expand upon it uh, it's just duplicating the same thing on each side but here you are with a walking mech really easy peasy the servo mech is really really simple to build and unfortunately it's kind of slow because your servos don't have the fastest rotation rate that will stay consistent with the animation so that being said you can build a little walking mech that will walk at the same speed as a Kerbal. If you wanted to outpace your Kerbal, you might want to think about doing your hinge mech or a roto mech, which is drastically faster than a Kerbal. The roto mechs are very fast, but they're very hard to control the, the leg, uh, keep the legs firm to the ground and at a proper angle. Now, if you want to do this the smart way, just build a flying mech. <laughs> It's a lot easier to build a flying mech um, but yeah this can definitely work if you're just have something small you want to carry around your base if you have you just want to look at a little pack pack mule like I have to carry around different components uh, that you're going to put in your base and it's really quick and easy uh, pack mules are great they are slow they're stable and they can get you all the, the stores that you need if you do it the right way but for now this is your boy Jatwa. hopefully you have enjoyed this little thing it looks like uh pat can who survived his egg drop from from the orbit of the moon all the way down to kerbin and splashed down successfully 
Uh, Pat Can is enjoying his new mech. He is currently uh, taking the place of Jeb, who is still on the mun. So, hopefully he's enjoying himself. But for now, I will catch you guys in the next video. For now, this is your boy Jatwa, and I, get, I need to stop saying for now. I've said that how many times? <laughs> I'm gonna get it out of here. Hit that like button, share this out to your friends. Uh, what's the new thing they do? Click the notification if you want to click the notification. If you like the background that you're seeing here, there's no green screen. There's a little bit of hesitation I'm seeing in here if I move too fast. That is NVIDIA Broadcast and it seems to be working fairly okay. Ish. <laughs> I'm going to get on out of here. It's your boy just want. I'm out. Peace. I think it's pretty cool. This, this, is the, this is the shuttle background if you're wondering what it is. Yeah.